This is the 28th lecture in the FOA series on fiber optics. This lecture will talk about fiber characterization. Fiber characterization happens in two locations, basically. Once in the manufacturing facility, where the fiber geometry and performance is documented as part of the manufacturing process. But we're going to look at the characterization of fiber that's already installed particularly in long-haul cable plants that often operate with wavelength division multiplexing and high bitrate systems. Every fiber optic cable plant should be tested by a light source and power meter, called an insertion loss test, because that test mimics the way the cable plant will be used by transmission systems and provides the most reliable test data for ensuring the cable plant will work properly. Outside plant and splice networks will also get OTDR testing because that verifies the quality of the installation and the performance of each individual splice. OTDR testing can also provide data on reflectance and optical return loss, which is also important for high bitrate systems. But links used for very high speed outside plant networks, typically greater than 10 gigabits per second, will also require fiber characterization, testing for spectral attenuation, chromatic dispersion, and polarization mode dispersion. Of course, one of the big advantages of fiber optics is its capability for long distance, high speed communications. Its attenuation at long wavelengths is low. Fiber can be fusion spliced with virtually no loss. High-powered lasers and fiber amplifier regenerators mean long distances are easily obtained. Wavelength division multiplexing allows carrying many different signals at different wavelengths over the same fiber. However, over these very long distances, new factors in fiber performance become important. That's chromatic dispersion, the dispersion caused by the light of different wavelengths, polarization mode dispersion caused by the polarization in fibers, may become limiting factors to the length that the cable can be operated, and they must be tested on these long runs. Wavelength division multiplexing puts different signals on the same fiber at different wavelengths. DWDM, what we call dense wavelength division multiplexing, uses very tightly spaced wavelengths around 1470 to 1625 nanometers. Coarse wavelength division multiplexing uses much wider spaced wavelengths over the entire range of 1270 to 1670 nanometers and requires special low water peak fibers. Most telcos these days prefer to use more wavelengths instead of more fibers because it's simpler and easier to implement. The use of wavelength division multiplexing, particularly coarse wavelength division multiplexing, may require measuring the spectral attenuation of the fiber. This is particularly important where CWDM is expected to be used on fibers that have not been qualified as low water peak fibers. Spectral attenuation is measured using a broadband source, typically an LED and a spectrum analyzer. It turns out that this test can be performed similarly with a chromatic dispersion test set, so both tests may be done at the same time. Chromatic dispersion is when Glass optical fibers transmit signals of different wavelengths at different speeds. As you can see in the two pulses, the fact that the redder light travels faster than the blue light causes the pulse to widen as it goes down the fiber. There are two causes of this, what we call material dispersion, caused by the index of refraction of the glass, and waveguide dispersion, caused by mode field diameter variation with wavelength. Material dispersion is caused by the variation 
of the index of refraction of the glass in the core of the fiber as a function of wavelength. Looking at the graph above, you can see the variation of the index of refraction over the entire spectrum covered by fiber optics may seem small, only a few percent. But when you're dealing with very high speed pulses over very long distances, it can add up. Waveguide dispersion is a bit more complex. In single-mode fiber, the wavelength of the light is not that much bigger than the core of the fiber. And the result is that light traveling down the fiber actually travels in an area that exceeds the diameter of the core, the area of which we call mode field diameter of the fiber. The mode field diameter is a function of the wavelength of the light, with longer wavelengths traveling in a larger mode field diameter. Thus, part of the light is traveling in the geometric core of the fiber, and part is traveling in the cladding, since the core is made of a higher index of refraction glass than the cladding, the light in the cladding travels faster than the light in the core. Longer wavelengths have larger mode field diameters, so they suffer more material dispersion. Dispersion is one of the factors used in engineering fibers. Material and waveguide dispersion have opposite variations with wavelength, so careful design of the fiber materials and index profiles allows the fiber to have a zero dispersion wavelength. On either side of that wavelength, dispersion increases. The engineering of chromatic dispersion is a function of the application of the fiber. As a result, Different single-mode fibers have been developed for the requirements of specific applications. In this graph, the blue line shows the chromatic dispersion for the fiber, a combination of material dispersion, shown in red, and waveguide dispersion, shown in orange. The combined chromatic dispersion will be what is measured for the fiber. The dispersion characteristics of a fiber can be manipulated by the materials and the design of the fiber. In fact, fibers can be made that have inverse chromatic dispersion to typical fibers and of a much higher magnitude. So a short length of these fibers can compensate for the chromatic dispersion in much longer lengths of regular fibers. These Chromatic dispersion compensating fibers are typically used at a repeater, an optical amplifier. So they can reverse the chromatic dispersion and allow longer links. You can also do the same kind of process with specialized optical components, but they tend to be much more expensive. As with any other component, optical fiber performance parameters can vary from batch to batch. So a long concatenated cable plant with many different fibers spliced together will have an end-to-end -end chromatic dispersion, which is an integration of the chromatic dispersion of all of the individual fibers. Therefore, the fiber in a long distance link will probably be tested for chromatic dispersion after installation or before upgrading the link to higher bitrate electronics. There are several methods used for testing chromatic dispersion in fiber. All involve testing at a variety of wavelengths using either discrete sources of various wavelengths, tunable lasers, or a broadband source with a monochromator in the receiver. All measure the relative speeds of the signals at the various wavelengths in the fiber. The data taken at discrete wavelengths is then analyzed to calculate the dispersion which is given in terms of picoseconds per nanometer per kilometer. Test methods use phase delay or time of flight, generally require access to both ends of the fiber, as well as a second fiber for synchronization of the two test instruments at either end. The method shown here tests CD by measuring the relative delay in the fiber for different discrete wavelengths. Another way to test chromatic dispersion is to use broad spectral width source and a monochromator to check at various wavelengths. 
it can calculate phase shifts from the varying wavelength and calculate the fiber's chromatic dispersion. A common fiber optic test instrument, the OTDR, measures transit times in a fiber and uses the index of refraction to calculate distance. If one tests with an OTDR at different wavelengths and calculates the difference in transit times, it can also calculate chromatic dispersion. Of course, methods for testing chromatic dispersion are covered by industry standards such as these. Polarization mode dispersion, or PMD, is a bit more complex. Polarization is a phenomenon of light traveling in a medium as waves with components at right angles. Some materials, like a glass optical fiber, may have a different index of refraction for each of these components of the life light wave, which is called birefringence. And a different index of refraction means light travels at a different speed. So in the simplest visualization, PMD in a fiber looks like the drawing here, where each component of the polarized light travels at a different speed, causing dispersion. The magnitude of PMD in a fiber is expressed as this difference, which is known as the differential group delay, DGD, or delta tau. One cause of polarization mode dispersion is waveguide by refringence. Waveguide by refringence is caused by variations in the geometry of the optical fiber, including core cladding concentricity, core ovality, or fiber ovality. Fiber may suffer variations in geometry over its length, and concatenated fibers may have different characteristics. So the results of factory testing of PMD may not be easily correlated to the PMD of an installed cable plant. Only testing of the installed cable plant can provide that information, and it may only show the PMD for the actual time the cable is being tested. More on that in a minute. What we call material birefringence is caused by stress on the fiber. Obviously, the stress can be localized, and in the case of aerial fiber, change over time. Data has shown that stress caused PMD can even be correlated with things like wind conditions affecting aerial fiber. Like waveguide by refringence, it can vary over time as stress in the cable plant changes. PMD is a complex issue in an installed fiber optic cable plant. In a long concatenated fiber optic cable, each fiber can have different waveguide and material birefringence characteristics caused by the random characteristics of each fiber in the link and the variations of the stress on the cable. PMD is an important issue as data rates increase from 10 to 40 to 100 gigabits per second and faster. Unfortunately, there's no reliable compensation schemes for PMD so the only solution is to test links to be upgraded for a PMD using one or more of the standardized test methods. PMD is generally tested for fibers during manufacture and even when being cabled. In the field, it's common to test PMD on newly installed fibers which are intended for operation at high speeds. Since PMD varies over time, a single test becomes an average, and tests at a later time may be done for comparison. There are a number of commonly used test methods for PMD, some of which are limited to the manufacturing environment, while others can be used in the field. Essentially, all the test instruments have a source, which can vary the polarization of the test signal, and a measurement unit that can analyze polarization mode dispersion changes. Here is a summary of the standards currently used for PMD testing. Within measurement uncertainty limits, 
any of these measurements can be considered valid. In summary, long distance, high speed systems consisting of concatenated fibers may need characterization for spectral attenuation and dispersion, both chromatic dispersion and polarization mode dispersion. The dispersion testing has several different methods to choose from, but manufacturers have instruments that can do the job and they can train techs on their use. As with all complex instruments, like OTDRs for example, the proper use of the instrument requires training. Be sure to look at all the other YouTube lectures on fiber optics and the hands-on hints videos also on our YouTube channel. We're the Fiber Optic Association, the professional society of fiber optics.